So, uh, so this was originally being worked on by Michael Griffin, and now he's on leave. Right. And this is so, uh, perhaps that's why there's not a bit of clarity in terms of the length of tax abatement on here. Is, so, but the board bill is ten years, eighty percent. Yeah. Okay. So, all right, it's a ten-year abatement, eighty percent abatement, is. And the LCRA staff and board are recommended. Are, okay, great. Yeah, a number of these, you know, came in <clears throat> late spring, and the LCRA looked at them in July and June and all that. So it's well, we're on summer recess. These have been around for quite a while. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we'll take questions from the committee. No question. <laughs> Thank you, Alderman, <laughs> Alderwoman <laughs> Howard. I have a, a question, and it's just, uh, on the charrette here, it shows two properties together. These are three separate properties, two adjoining and one separate? That's correct. Um, so the one looks like it has a single family residence, or, or at least a maybe an up and over like a flat, and then the other one may be a four family. Cor I, I'm not. Correct. Cl this was an early drawing that okay. came in with the initial uh, application uh -huh. and since they and they've all gone with three four families the one on the left that's how okay so they'll with. they'll be a four family on each city plot here each right? uh, yes okay oh, all wow. right thank you that's all do we know are these uh, one all one bedroom or are these multiple bedroom, I believe two bedrooms each. each is a two bedroom oh that's some terrific density there oh, Alderman these will Howard. Be Market rate? Yes. Yes, okay. ma'am. Okay. Alderwoman Murphy? No question. Uh, Alderman Gunther? Um, thank you, Chairman. Um, so my question is just, and this might just be because I'm new here, but um, on the assessor's page, uh, on I like to go through and look at the previous taxes paid, and on the assessor's page, it has property exempt from real estate taxes because it was LRA. So how does that work if there's no property taxes on it? Well, uh, if it's... Um, well, you probably know the answer, too. But yeah, it's going to... Well, they're going to pay 20% of the... Yeah, well, first of all, the, the, it was exempt, but once it's no longer LRA, the assessor will determine what the value of the land is. So the developer will be paying based on that land value plus 20% of the improvement value for the, uh, uh, because it's only 80% abatement. So the assessor is just going to assess the vacant lot and then that'll be the Correct. starting point. Exactly. Right. Okay. Um, yeah, and then I guess my only other thing is just the the ones we've gone through so far. They've most the MVAs have been D through G. This one is B, meaning that it is uh, considered kind of a uh, prime real estate in the city, which I thought we were trying to get away from abating for ten years prime real estate. So, um, so. I'm, I'm sorry. Which I on the according to this says it's an MVA of B. Is this? Oh, is that B? Yeah. Yeah. So. so yeah, down? I, I'm sorry, I don't look at the maps. I just do whatever they. Yes. I mean, we, I am apply over there and. But. Okay. All right. Yeah. So I mean, I, it's more of a comment, but I just, yeah, I think. Um, Maybe you guys can explain. Well, no, I was just going to say that that this neighborhood has several MVAs, and part of it is B, but also, as I mentioned earlier, a lot of these projects came through LCRA before we went to the, you know, probably if this went through today, it might not have a 10 year tax abatement, but because it went through early, it, it still has that 10 year. Mm -hmm. But, it, you know, we, we would evaluate it again and, and it, you're absolutely right now, we're, we're having fewer and fewer that would be 10 years, particularly if they're MVA. In a B, yeah. yeah. Now, I, did I see Jonathan Ferry here earlier, is he still here? Yeah. yeah. Oh. <laughs> uh, so uh, along those lines, Jonathan, with the model that we've been discussing the last, you know, well, few months for you, uh, a few weeks for this committee, um, this is a, it's currently a vacant piece of land, but 
then they're creating a tremendous amount of density on it. Uh, so even though it's rated B, I mean, we're doing a 10 year, but it's an 80% abatement. Does this kind of fit into the model that you've been working on? Um, are we doing this Vista one? Where are we at? I think it's, which one is it? It's uh, 42.11 Shoto through 42.39 Shoto. Yeah, so um, the, the model, in short, is going to look at the um, combination of the land value plus the use um, that the, the land is sort of scheduled for. So if it's, according to the land use plan, it's residential, it's going to be compared to other residential properties, for example. And if it's currently a vacant piece of land. If it's it currently a vacant piece of land, it's going to look at the average density in the area around it. It's not just the parcel itself. Mm -hmm. So it looks at basically at the, the so it looks at um, if it's a commercial piece of property, it compares it to commercial and residential to residential, mixed use to mixed use, and then it compares it to the several blocks around it. Uh, that are also commercial. And so it looks at the average density of, and so then the baseline will be the average density for all, all those types of, of um, properties. So if there's zero density on it currently, and it, look at, it looks at the average density and it's a denser populated area, then it yeah. could technically still. Yeah, if the high. average density is two stories, let's say, then it's yeah. going to compare it to a two story building, yeah. even though it's a vacant lot. Right. Okay, thank you. Did you have any other questions? No, for that question. Okay. Um, with that, I will entertain a motion that we pass Board Bill 162 out with a due pass recommendation. So moved. Second. Previous roll. Is there an objection to previous roll? Is that an objection to previous roll? Okay. <laughs> Uh, hearing no objection to previous rule, Board Bill 162 passes out with a due pass recommendation. Uh, did you have any other board bills, Alderman? Yeah, I think that? there's... Uh, 63. 163, 64, 64 164. and 65. Oh, you have uh, <laughs> quite a few more. Okay. <laughs> Let me just pull them out of the pile here. Huh? Okay. Uh, we'll go with Board Bill 163. I guess this is a scattered site one, three different infill housing. Looks like it's all new construction. Is that right, Zach? Oh. And it's uh, 10 year and 80%. Man, it's 10 years. Same. Oh, okay. Yeah, you're welcome. It's your board bill, Alderman. You can certainly. I think that's where where we need to be putting these incentives. Uh, Alderman, I, I apologize. Yeah. Uh, it's uh, three new homes and fill and it's uh, 10 years at 80 percent okay uh we'll take questions from the committee alderman moore no alderwoman howard no questions alderwoman murphy these are currently vacant lots i take it yes okay thank you uh alderman gunther um just kind of go again with the uh mva of b and they're up for sale up to $459,000 houses that we're abating here. Is that what it says there? $459,000 house? Um, if that's what it says, I guess so, yes. Okay. All right.
We lost our chairman. <laughs> I don't know what to do. Who's the co-chair? Sorry, we have a committee member going rogue. <laughs> uh, I don't have any questions on this uh, particular board bill. Is there a motion to pass board bill? Oh, mm -hmm. I have one more question. Okay, Alderman so Howard. What were the taxes collected on these properties before redevelopment? Were these LRCA properties, so they were not taxed? It says current assessed value was 7000 630. But were we were we receiving income on this at all? Was it an LRCA? Were these all three LRCA properties purchased for our development? No, I don't think these were LRCA. They were privately owned. They were privately owned. Yeah. And they were vacant. Okay. Correct. So, but with the net we will be getting more revenue at this point than we were previously. Okay. Thank you. That's all I have. Yes, ma'am. I, I, no, I just want to ask a question. It says here that the developers are uh, spending approximately $900,000. Is that correct? On the construction? Right. Okay. Thank you. I just wanted to get that out there. Okay. Without uh, any other questions, I will entertain a motion for a due pass recommendation of board bill number 163. So moved. Any well, objection? To, okay. There's an objection to previous roll. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Alderman Moore? Alderwoman Howard? Aye. Alderwoman Hubbard? Alderwoman Murphy? Aye. Alderwoman Spencer? Alderman Gunther? Nope. Alderman Oldenburg? Chairman Cohn? Aye. Four aye votes, one no vote. Okay, with that, uh, Board Bill 163 passes out with a due pass recommendation. We will now take up Board Bill number 164. This is uh, single family homes, 80% uh, uh, I guess three single family homes and they're seeking 80% tax abatement for 10 years. Questions from the committee, Alderman Moore. Alderwoman Howard. No questions. Alderwoman Murphy. No questions. Alderman Gunther. Um, no questions. Okay. Is there a, <coughs> or a motion to pass Board Bill 164 out with a due pass recommendation? So moved. Second. Previous, Previous roll. roll. Uh, you're Previous okay. Roll. All right. Mm -hmm. Hearing no objections to previous roll, Board Bill 164 passes out with a due pass recommendation. <clears throat> and this, I believe, is my last one. I uh, will now hear Board Bill 165. Sorry, Mr. Chairman, for not the, the way we do it. And my we have a, a development corporation that actually meets with developers. Many times, I don't meet with developers and try to stay out of the process. And then they come down here, and I I only um, show up when they uh, tell me to. So um, this is the uh, last one, and I guess uh, this is just seeking, I guess, two years of tax abatement. And this is uh, a rehab. 
Yep, two at 80%. Right. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think this was a much more modest rehab is what happened here, so they weren't doing as an extensive work. Is that what? Yeah. yeah. It's a really uh, benign existing apartment building that's being rehabbed. And uh, uh, Alderman Rohde is correct. His development group suggested a two-year, and I guess they, you know, felt that it's good to give at least some, uh, uh, some assistance to the project, but it's more modest than any of the others. All right. A fluff and buff, there we as go. they call it. Okay. <clears throat> uh, questions from the committee, Alderman Moore? No questions. Alderwoman Howard? No questions. Alderwoman Murphy? No questions. Uh, Alderman Gunther? No questions. Okay. Uh, with that, I'll entertain a motion that we pass Board Bill 165 out with a due pass recommendation. So moved. I'll object to previous rule. Okay. Uh, there's an objection to previous rule. Uh, Madam Clerk, will you please call the roll? Alderman Moore. Uh, Alderwoman Howard. Aye. Yeah. Alderwoman yeah. Hubbard. Alderwoman Murphy. Aye. Alderwoman Spencer. <laughs> Alderwoman Spencer. Alderman Gunther. Aye. Alderman Oldenburg. Chairman Cohn. Aye. Five aye votes. Okay, with that, uh, Board Bill 165 passes out with a due pass recommendation from thank the committee. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Alderman, Members thank committee. you very much. Uh, and I see Alderman Coder over there, so we'll go ahead and take up his legislation. I'm. Three, does that sound right? That sounds right. 153, Alderman Coder. Oh. Got handouts. 153, 154, 158, 159. Sorry, we're they're going through all of your board oh. bills right now. Yeah, but we're gonna one. we're gonna first hear board bill number 153. All right, thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee. Board Bill 153 uh, is a redevelopment bill authorizing 10 years of tax abatement at 95 percent. Uh, for the property at 2330 through 32 South 12th Street, effectively known, uh, affectionately known as the Soulard Hilton. Um, it was a long uh, time dilapidated building in Soulard that for many, many years, as long as most people can remember, was a single room occupancy by the week rental hotel with uh, shared bathrooms and Lots of cockroaches. Um, it was purchased by a developer who had a plan to put a bunch of apartments in. The neighborhood didn't much care for that. He eventually sold it to Renovations Unlimited, which is Ron Seabaugh and Hank Hart, who were here earlier. Due to the time change, they had to leave, unfortunately. Um, and they are planning on turning this building into seven condominiums, for sale condominiums. Um, this is in Soulard. If this was a single family project, frankly, it probably wouldn't probably get any tax abatement. Um, given the size and the condition of this building and the amount of investment, uh, this is about a $1.4 million project. Um, SLDC is recommending 10 years at 95%. Uh, there's a picture of the building on the second page. To put it in perspective, it's on the corner of uh, 12th and Lamai. It's got a turret. It's across the street from the house we often call the Adams Family House, which is a big sort of marble Joy's cool looking house. house. Yes, Joy's house. Um, this is a big, very prominent building in the neighborhood. Uh, the Soulard Restoration Group's been very involved working with the developer on uh, various, you know, facade improvements and sight line things because they're adding an elevator. One of the things they're doing, the hope is that, you know, renovating this building, we can encourage some of our Soulardians who are uh, looking to, to get rid of their large homes, can downsize, have an elevator move into something, uh, something nice. You'll see the units range from about 200 to 322 per unit. And that, discrep that big sort of swing is because one of the units is actually below grade. Um, it's like a basement unit um, with much less windows and really no great views. So that's why you see that uh, sort of uh, swing from 200 to 322 per unit. So I'm happy to answer any questions, uh, unfortunately. And I know Jonathan has prepared a summary as well, which you all should have, giving it one, two, three, four and a half stars in his analysis. Okay. I uh, will take questions from the committee. Alderman Moore. How many units are there now, Jack? Uh, how many are there now? 
Um, the, you, the building was something like 26 single room units that didn't even have bathrooms. It's gonna be seven large condos, but it was 20 some, 26, I wanna say, units that were pretty rough. Uh, the, uh, Ron and Hank do most of this work themselves. They use a number of, um, uh, I, they hire some subs, and I couldn't tell you who, but they do a lot of this work themselves. Uh, Alderwoman Howard. So, they are getting historic tax credits? No. Yes, they are. Okay, okay. Uh, yeah, I think this is... I was I I've noticed this building last year when I was down there for the dog parade and I was like, Oh, it's so pretty, it's so sad. Yeah, when you go by it again, so they had to one of the things they had to do at, at great expense and actually somebody got sick in the process, was they had to you do this acid treating process to take the, the decades of paint off of the brick. It was very difficult to do. Um, it, the building looks fantastic from the outside. They're just getting started with the internal uh, renovations. Okay. And so how many will they have? There's how many floors? I think it's a, is it a three or four story. It's a three story uh, unit. It's technically four because there'll be a basement unit. And how many units total? Seven. Seven. Okay. All right. Thank you. Uh, Alderman Gunther. Or I'm sorry, Alderwoman Murphy. So I said basically we're turning a, a dilapidated rooming house into seven Into homes. seven, <laughs> yes. Seven Tax condos. Taxpaying homes. Correct. <laughs> Yeah, okay, thank you. Alderman Gunther. Um, thank you, Chairman. Um, so, Alderman Coder, you're saying that it's 10 years at 95%, but on this last uh, sentence, the staff recommends 10 years abatement at 80%, and then it has in parentheses 95%? Right. So, are we going for 80 or 95? It's a 95, and the board bill reflects that. That is a typo. Okay, thank you. This is one that uh, you talk about. Does the uh, staff recommend or does the, right. the board recommend? The staff was at 80%. Uh, the board, uh, the uh, developer came and testified in front of the board and he gave a great presentation that easily convinced our board that it should be at 95 rather than 80. So that's the reason that discrepancy is there. When we found out all he had to do. Yeah. We, we, there was definitely, so the initial recommendation of this project was 80%. Um, the developer came in, met with Jonathan, met with SLDC, and then presented to the board who came back with the recommendation of 95. Okay. Alderman. That's all. No further questions. Okay. I, well, I think I remember picking you up from this when it was the Soulard Hilton while oh, you were in your college days. I, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> Let's let the record After reflect that didn't happen. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hearing no other questions, I'll entertain a motion on Board Bill 153 uh, that we passed it out with a due pass recommendation. So moved. Second. Previous roll. Any objections to previous roll? Okay, with that, uh, Board Bill 153 passes out with a due pass recommendation. Uh, we will take up Board Bill 154. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee. Uh, board Bill 154 is a uh, bill, board bill authorizing five years of full tax abatement uh, for a property in the McKinley Heights neighborhood located at 2263 through 65 Indiana. This property has been long vacant. Um, it is in one of the more challenging sections of McKinley Heights, Rocco Dana, who's here today, who's a well-known and respected developer and very active member of the Neighborhood Association of McKinley Heights, has decided to tackle this project. He has a number of very successful projects in McKinley Heights already. He's done single family homes that he's flipped. He does some rental properties. He lives in the neighborhood. He's shown great commitment. Um, so his plan here is to take this six family building, turn it into six rental units, he does really high-end, great work. They will be very energy efficient uh, and be excellent addition to the neighborhood. Rents ranging from 700 a month for the single unit, the single room units, to a little over 1,000 for the two bedroom units. Um, you know, this is a this this one's a no-brainer to me. I, you know, I'll incentivize anyone to develop 
and do quality developments in, in this stretch of McKinley Heights. It, we, we need more folks investing money. We've still got a number of problem properties over there. Uh, so I fully support this. I know the neighborhood's on board with it. Rocco's here if you have any uh, additional questions. I believe he's going to spend about 450000 on these uh, on this rehab. Okay. Do we have the handouts? Oh, I'm sorry. I, I do. Apologize, guys. This committee likes pictures and numbers. Yeah. Yes. We're, we're kind of like picture book people. Questions from the committee, Alderwoman Howard. Now these will be market rate. These will be market rate apartments. Yes. That's all. Okay, Alderwoman Murphy. No questions. Alderman Gunther. No questions. Okay. Uh, with that, I'll entertain a motion that we pass Board Bill 154 out with the due pass recommendation. So moved. <laughs> Any objection to previous roll? Hearing none, Board Bill 154 passes out with a due pass recommendation. Right. We will now take up Board Bill number 159. Okay, I have how I'm going to give the handouts first. Yes, please. Thank you. You guys have renderings, right? Let me get a, I'm going to grab a rendering. This is big. What's going on? mentioned you like pictures, so here's some pictures, too. Oh, that's this one here. Oh, swanky. All right. May I proceed? Absolutely. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee. Board Bill 159, another Soulard project that we're very excited about. Uh, this building, this proposed building, it's right now a vacant lot, is at 1001 through 3 Russell Boulevard. To put it in perspective, if you know where Johnny's was, now Harpo's, you've got Johnny's slash Harpo's, the Soulard Art Building immediately to the east, Liberta and Sons Bicycles is in that building, and then a vacant lot sort of up on the hill. Uh, it's been vacant for a very long time. Uh, it was owned by Pete Rothschild forever, and he, uh, he sold it to, uh, to Simpson Klosser, a, a, a par partnership um, that has uh, done some other work. In the, I don't think they've any, done anything in Soulard. This will be their first project. They've worked very closely with the neighborhood. Uh, Charlie Klosser is here today, if you have any specific questions for him. Um, this is a big project, something we're really excited about. He's going to basically build a mixed-use building you know, at, at street level, at grade, that'll be the same height as the art building next door. You've got the rendering there. Um, it's about a four, it's a little over $4 million project. Uh, it'll be 21 market rate apartments upstairs with first floor retail. Um, this board bill would authorize uh, a 10 year tax abatement at 90%. Um, once again, again, if this was a single family in Soulard, no way would we be talking about this. But given this, you know, the, the history of this lot, the challenges in developing there, I mean, we think this is a great project that's going to really transform that block. Um, the Soulard Restoration Group and its development team have worked very closely with the developer on the design and everything else. Um, the developer already has a letter of intent from a pharmacy interested in operating and opening uh, in, in, in the building, taking up some of the retail space, which would be an excellent addition to the neighborhood. Um, he's got enough parking in the rear, the way this, I don't know if there's a site plan. Uh, the way the building will be situated, there'll be parking in the rear. There's an alley on Russell there. You'll be able to drive up and access the parking for the, uh, for the residential units, which is always, you know, can be an issue in Soulard. Um, we're very excited about this project. Again, rents from about 15 to 1700 a month, which is about in line with the other uh, large-scale new construction apartment complexes mm -hmm. that are being built right now in, in Soulard. Okay. I will take questions from the committee. Alderman Moore. No questions. Alderwoman Howard. Um, no questions. I think this is wonderful. Alderwoman Murphy. Same here. 
if they, if they run out of space in Soulard, send them my way. Yeah, yeah. You hear that? <laughs> Alderman Gunther? No question. So I, this is currently a surface parking lot, right? It's not even, it's, it's, it's just a, it's a, there's some stuff parked there. Cars parked there. Yeah, but it's not an improved parking surface though. Okay. There's just like some random buses and I don't know what else parked there. So uh, is there, is there parking incorporated into the new building? Yes. So in is the there a garage or is it just No, surface? it'll be surface parking in the rear of the building. So this, you know, if you look at the sort of overview here, um, but enough to accommodate the both the commercial and residential. It's enough. It, it's definitely enough to. They've got 20 spaces, which is enough to accommodate the residential. You know, okay. the the commercial part. I, I imagine will need some sort of variance, but that's that's for anything in Soulard. Right. Okay. If we didn't have enough parking for the residents residential portion, it this would have been dead on arrival. Right. But since there's that, it'll work out. People are willing to walk a few blocks for their commercial stuff in that neighborhood. I uh, and. Oh, when you so the rendering that we have, this is a gray brick. Is that allowed underneath the local historic district in Soulard? With, with a brick color, I'm gonna ask, I'm gonna defer to Charlie on that because I couldn't, uh, I do not know that level of specifics. Oh, okay. And this is just a rendering. Have you guys decided right. on I mean, your Soulard brick color yet? Soulard has one of the most no. strict. We're still working with the neighborhood and the printing is a little bit. Come up here. Okay. Yeah, so um, the, Charlie, by the way. So the, uh, the Soulard and Lafayette Square have two. Yeah, of the most and, and so Soulard, and we're dealing with this on a different project right now. We'll get into the details of the actual size of each brick and color. Yeah. Uh, that happens, you know, kind of later in the process. Okay. I just, I mean, I, I know that it will have to conform to the historic standards of the the district, but I just want to make sure that the developer is aware that that does become a bit of an issue. I'm also. An I love the gray brick. Yeah. I think it's fantastic, but it, I'm pretty sure that in Soulard it has to be red brick. Charlie's become very familiar with the uh, the code in Soulard yeah. <laughs> and he's had many a meetings and uh, and beers with the with the neighborhood development team. Wonderful. Yeah. Okay uh, any other questions? Alderwoman Howard did you say that you had? No I, I, I looked and I read. Oh wonderful. <laughs> okay uh, with that I'll entertain a motion that we pass out board bill 154 with a due pass recommendation. So moved. Second. Previous roll. Any objections to previous roll? 159. Or was that 159? 159. 159. That was oh. 159. Sorry. Uh, can we do that again? <laughs> I'll entertain a motion that we do pass out. Okay. Board Bill 159, uh, or, yeah, any motion? Someone has moved to pass the pass. Bill. pass. Okay. Yeah. And Alderman Gunther, second. 159, uh, second. She seconded. Any objection to previous roll? Hearing none. Board Bill 159 passes out with a due pass recommendation. Someone's four looks like a nine from SLDC. Yes. Thanks. <laughs> that had me tripped up for a while, too. All right, or someone's one. nine looks like a four, I should say. Just close the loop on that, Zach. And Okay, and we'll take up Board Bill 160. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee. This is my last one for today. We have another Soulard project that the neighborhood is excited about. Uh, this is at 2222 Menard, which is the corner of Menard and I think Shenandoah, yeah, Menard and Shenandoah. This is the former site of Stars Design, Inc., one of the uh, mayor's luncheon awardees just this last week for the white and wonderful business they operate out of Soulard. About three years ago, and it was, I want to say it was either late January, or early February, um, unfortunately, Star Design's headquarters blew up. Uh, AT&T, a subcontractor for AT&T, punctured a gas line um, while installing cabling. Luckily, no one was injured. Uh, the fire department was able to get the residents, because this was a mixed-use building with an office of commercial space and residents in it uh, out of there just in the nick of time and literally the whole building exploded. Bricks went everywhere, uh, completely destroyed the, the building. It had to be taken down. For, there was a very lengthy lawsuit that was recently settled. Um, and so STARS is looking to rebuild. They own a number of buildings. They own the building next door to this. Uh, that is some residences and some offices, and they own a number of other buildings in the vicinity that they operate their business out of that they have acquired and moved to 
uh, while they, you know, sort of transitioned since their headquarters exploded. They want to move back under as close to one roof as they can. Uh, they do work all over the world. They are um, in the uh, clothing business. They manufacture clothing for many large, like I think Harley Davidson is one of their big clients. So all the Harley Davidson clothing and stuff you'd see. Um, they're a great company. They employ a lot of people. They've shown a great commitment to the neighborhood. Um, this board bill would authorize 10 years of tax payment at 80%. Um, again, it's a weird situation where, you know, no historic tax credits available. This is new construction. We're starting from the ground up, got to do an all brick building on a, on a lot with some challenges, not a very big footprint. Um, you know, they would prefer if they just had their original building, they quite liked it. But since they're starting over, uh, you know, they're going to they're gonna try to build it to meet their needs as a business, a growing business. They're going to spend somewhere between 1.3 and 1.5 million dollars. You've got a little rendering on the second page. Um, there's some portions of this building that look a little more kind of almost modern, it's more of a warehouse look. They've been working closely with the neighborhood. These plans will be further to revi uh, refined as their project continues, but uh, they're going with sort of a bit of a warehouse look. The neighborhood's very excited. Uh, we all want them to rebuild and get them back on their feet there. Okay, we'll take questions from the committee. Alderman Moore. It is. It's down the street from my house, actually. Oh, wow. <laughs> that seems like a conflict. No. Is it? Uh, <laughs> Alderwoman Howard. No questions. Alderwoman Murphy. No questions. Looks good. Thank you. Uh, Alderman Gunther. Thank you, Chairman. Um, Alderman Coder, just did you say that this is the same lot that the original building blew up on? Yes. Okay. All yeah. Right. It's it. It's right at. It's the one that's been fenced in with a chain link fence for a couple of years. Okay, that was my only question. You'll Thank often you. see some uh, French bulldogs running around there barking at people. No further questions. Okay. I. Anyone else have any other questions? All right, with that, I'll entertain a motion that we pass Board Bill 160 out with a due pass recommendation. So moved. Second. Any objection to previous roll? Hearing none, Board Bill 160 passes out with a due pass recommendation. Thank you, Mr. Thank Chairman, you, members Alderman. of the committee. So Alderman Conway told me that he is on his way, so we'll go ahead and hold his for now. <clears throat> um, now we got more. Alderman Moore. We are ready for you, sir. No. Or I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Alderman Ogilvy is here and has a, oh. a bill. Uh, Alderman Ogilvy. Oh. Should have hopped up faster, Alderman Moore. <laughs> Good morning, friends. Uh, just pass this around. This is Board Bill 151. It authorizes tax abatement for three new construction single family homes in the 6700 block of Nashville Avenue in the Dogtown neighborhood. These would be three bedroom, two and a half bath homes. Uh, it authorizes five years of tax abatement at 80%. Um, this is either a C or a D MVA, I don't uh, recall off the top of my head. And I am happy to entertain questions. Alderman Moore. Alder Woman Murphy. These are vacant lots now? Two of the lots are vacant, and the third lot has a home on it, which um, will be taken down. Demolished. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Alderman Gunther. No questions. Okay. Uh, with that, I will uh, make a motion that we pass out Board Bill 151 with a due pass recommendation. So moved. Any seconds? And previous roll. is there an objection to previous roll? Hearing none, Board Bill 151 passes out with a due pass recommendation. Thank you. Did you have any other board bills? Okay, all right. Thank you, Alderman. Thank you. And uh, Alderman Moore. No questions. 
questions. No questions. <laughs> no questions. <laughs> uh, Alderman Moore has board bill number 145. And 156. Oh, and one, well, let's start with 145. Right. Okay. Okay. Alderman, Alderman Moore. Board Bill 145 is the St. Fernand project, which in also includes Sarah. And if you notice on Sarah in Alderman Kennedy's ward from uh, Delmar on over is a very highly developed and impacted neighborhood. And we want to continue. So these St. Ferdinand homes are very much needed, a very depressed area. And Northside Community Development has been the one that's been developing and helping us to bring the Greaterville and the Fourth Ward back to some of the grandeur that it once knew. Alderman, do you by chance have the handouts from SLDC? Or I think they're just on are they ne next to the podium there? Oh, okay. I kept them all. Thank you. Trying to hide this wonderful project from us. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I didn't want God to ask me any questions. <laughs> so I ask for your favorable consideration of anything that's doing, being done in that ward in that area, we're trying to impact an area, so it is highly welcome. Um, so we'll, and I just want to uh, clarify too, the, the bills for 15 years of tax abatement, um, this is an, an MVA H and I area. Um, it's part of a scattered site redevelopment plan. Um, you know, H and I are obviously some of the most depressed sections of the city. Um, so it certainly would qualify for a 15 year tax abatement in my opinion, um, and I think many people's opinions. Um, but part of the reason that it is 15 uh, is that there's a low income tax uh, credit that's associated with it, and those require a, a 15 year abatement on these projects. So um, does anyone have any questions of Alderman Moore? Thanks for the clarity, Mr. Chairman. Absolutely, my friend. Uh, Hearing no questions, I'll entertain a motion that we pass Board Bill 145 out with a due pass recommendation. So moved. Uh, previous roll. Is there an objection to previous roll? Hearing no objections to previous roll, Board Bill 145 passes out with a due pass recommendation. And we will move on to Board Bill number 156. Board Bill 156 has the same impact on, the, on this ward. It's in the same area. We already have 19 houses built in that area on that street. And there was a building that a couple of old houses that needed to be torn down. So we demolished them and they were capable, able to put the 3900 block of Lincoln, 3937 Lincoln up. Cool. And we do need development. Mm -hmm. Uh, are there any questions of Alderman Moore? Is this why there's no bricks on your desk anymore? <laughs> Thank you, Beth. <laughs> no further questions. Alderman Gunther. No questions. Okay, I will entertain a motion that we pass Board Bill 156 out with a due pass recommendation. So moved. Second. Uh, previous roll. Is there an objection to previous roll? Hearing none, Board Bill 156 passes out with a due pass recommendation. Thank you. Thank you, you very man. much. Good luck. And thank you for <laughs> all of your good. hard work with redeveloping in your neighborhood. Yes. Uh, now, so Carol's here. But Alderwoman Howard has a board bill. Yeah. Is that the church guy? Hey, Dan. Years. We're doing years now. The rest of the poet. We're doing years now. Sorry. On Gilson. 
I'm, gonna say I'm this. sorry. Oh, you're fine. This is a conflict of uh, interest. <laughs> Alderwoman Howard has Board Bill 140. Good morning, committee members. Um, 5335 Gilson is a cottage style house um, that fell into disrepair and the new owner has renovated it inside and out. Um, he's from Minnesota and he just um, decided to do this. He fix, is fixing this up for his daughter, actually. So we talked and um, here we are. So um, I think this would be a, a good use and it'll bring some property up that um, was rather depressed before. Are there any questions? Uh Alderman Moore. No question. Alderwoman Murphy. Uh, no question. Looks good. Alderman Gunther. Um, no questions. So, and and just to be clear, so this is MVAE, which is usually, a, I believe, it's a light shade of orange on our our maps. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, you know, this is eight years for eighty percent, um, which seems appropriate given the MVA. Uh, designation. Um, I think I've been to a barbecue on this block before. <laughs> uh, or a cocktail party. Or a cocktail party on the porch. <laughs> um, all right, well, if uh, there's no further questions, I'll entertain a motion that we pass Board Bill 140 out with a due pass recommendation. So moved. Second. Uh, uh, previous roll. Any objection to previous roll? Hearing none, Board Bill 140 passes out with a due pass recommendation. Thank you, Alderwoman. Thank you. Uh, Alderwoman Spencer is unable to be here today, and I believe Alderman Gunther has agreed to present her board bills in her absence. Oh. 144 and So uh, we'll take up Board Bill 144 first. Okay. All right, thank you, Mr. Chairman and members of the Committee. Um, the first one is uh, Board Bill 144. This is 3442 through 3444 California Avenue. Um, this is uh, right on the edge of the uh, Cherokee neighborhood in the Gravway Park, our Cherokee Street in the Gravway Park neighborhood. Um, the uh, developers, Erica Johnson and Daryl Brown, they've been um, working quite a bit with Alderwoman Spencer on uh, developing some properties in the Gravway Park neighborhood. Um, these two properties on Board Bill 144, uh, they are purchasing um, and renovating into single family houses. Uh, they are both currently vacant. Um, the MVA on these houses is F, uh, so I think that um, allows for our, you know, kind of shows that it's an area that needs a little more incentive. And Alderwoman Spencer is asking for a 10 year abatement on the project and SLDC concurs with that. So are there any uh, questions? Any questions from the committee? No questions. Hearing no questions, I'll entertain that we pass uh, Board Bill 144 out with a due pass recommendation. So moved. Second. Previous roll. Any objections to previous roll? It sounds good. Hearing no objections, Board Bill 144 passes out with a due pass recommendation. We will now take up board bill number 155. And then Alderman has, Alderman Gunther has board bill 157 of his own. Okay, thank you again, Chairman. Uh, board bill 155 uh, is another project that Alderwoman Kara Spencer uh, has in the Gravoy Park neighborhood. Um, this is uh, the MBA of uh, F on it. Um, 
this property, uh, the developer, uh, Orlando Askins, who many of us are familiar with, he's probably done a project in just about every one of our neighborhoods. Um, he does nice uh, renovations and um, is uh, very successful in getting uh, vacant homes turned into um, single family houses in, in our area. So uh, he's purchased the property for 38,000, putting um, 76,000 into it and the property will be for sale uh, for 145,000, which um, is still, a, in my opinion, is still a pretty affordable house in um, South City. So uh, Alderwoman Spencer will be asking for a 10 year abatement at 90% of the assessed value. So I would ask for your favorable consideration. Okay. Any questions on board bill number 155? Looks good. Hearing no, oh. Yep, absolutely, go for it. Orlando Askins. Correct. Now he lives in the city. I thought nope. he was an outside nope. developer from. California. He is outside developer, but yeah, he. I know he's done a lot of projects all over the city. Okay. I I will entertain a motion that we pass board bill 155 out with a due pass recommendation. So moved. Second. Previous roll. Any objections to previous roll? Hearing none. Board bill 155 passes out with a due pass recommendation. Since Alderman Gunther is up at the podium, we'll take up Board Bill 157, which is Alderman Gunther's. Okay, thank you again, Chairman. And Members of the committee, um, 3325 Wisconsin uh, is on the, um, I would say it's the southeast edge of the Benton Park neighborhood. Um, for everyone that sat in this committee with me, you know that I uh, do not uh, favor um, uh, any sort of abatements in Benton Park neighborhood. However, this is on the very far southeast edge. Uh, it's just a couple blocks away from the um, Lemp. Um, the Lemp Brewery, um, which is a very large, uh, somewhat blighted, uh, uh, hard to develop area. Um, so this block is kind of one of the last blocks in that area of the neighborhood um, that is being developed. Uh, the developer, uh, Daryl Brown, is looking to take a two family and turn it into a single family. Uh, some of the challenges of this block that are not reflected in the pictures here are that uh, right next to it there is a, a large warehouse building that used to be a um, an ice house building um, so it has a uh, um, kind of a warehouse feel right next door to it uh, on the north side of this property is a lra uh, building that has been vacant um, as long as i've been in the neighborhood that uh, has a really serious lean to it and probably will uh, also need incentives in the future to develop it and then directly across the street from 3325 um, are two vacant uh, four family units so um, this is kind of the one of the blocks that uh, it needs kind of a little bit of a push to help uh, get people interested in developing in it so that's why um, I decided to support Daryl's wish for a uh, abatement on it um, I will mention however though um, that uh, I'm asking for five years um, at just 75% abatement um, because it is a desirable neighborhood. I, would, I did want to make sure that we weren't just giving away 100% uh, abatement on it. So I'm asking for five years at 75% um, for this project. So with that, I would like to entertain questions and ask for your favorable consideration. Is the uh, residential market analysis is that the MVA rating? Okay, great. Thank you. Uh, uh, other questions from the committee? Alderman Moore? Your ward and mm -hmm. Spencer's ward connect? Uh, yes, we share a boundary of Cherokee Street. And Darrell Brown works in both wards? Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you, Alderman. Uh, Alderwoman Howard? So was. Um, in order to get Mr. Brown to invest in this property, was the abatement a condition of his investment? Um, he actually uh, had already purchased the building and started working on it, but then um, he talked to me about some of the other vacancies on the block and, and what 
kind of that what are you going to do about making this block better sort of thing. And so, um, so I agreed to, uh, to give the five years 75% abatement as a way to help him put a little bit uh, higher um, quality renovation in uh, to be able to kind of spur a little bit more interest in that, that area of the neighborhood. So are other properties on this block available? Yes. So is he considering doing those also? Um, the property that is directly next door, which I believe would have been 3323 Wisconsin, is an LRA property. He did put an offer in on that, um, although uh, I actually turned down his offer because he wanted to tear the building down because it ha does have a kind of a lean on it. Um, so we've had a couple other projects in the neighborhood that when they have a lien, the, they're able to take the brick down and relay them straight. Um, and uh, so I did not support his demolition, um, but, uh, but he is interested in, so we're working on what he so can do. So is that the Ice House building you referred to? No, the Ice House is on the south side, yep. Okay. Yep. Yep. No more questions. Thank you. Thank you. Alderwoman Murphy. No, I would think you would know best for your ward. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, uh, hearing no other questions, I'll entertain a motion that we pass Board Bill 157 out with a due pass recommendation. So moved. Second, previous roll. Any objections to previous roll? Hearing none, Board Bill 157 passes out with a due pass recommendation. All right, thank you. Thanks. Okay, we have a, a number of other board bills here. Uh, Alderman Boyd is over in public safety, uh, so um, will someone from SLDC present these? Yeah, I want to make sure. Alderman Conway also is going to ask me to have SLDC present. Mm -hmm. uh, this is board bill number 173. And I'm still waiting word from Alderman Williamson about his board bill. But Donna, do you mind? Mor Good morning. Good morning. That's better. Good morning. Oh, for those of you that I have not met, I am Amina Wright. wasn't a uh, while back she uh, was before your committee but maybe before some of you were here uh -huh. uh, but she is now back and so you you will see her <laughs> smiling face on a number of occasions I'm ubiquitous <laughs> yes. aren't we all <laughs> so we have board bill 173 this is 2809 Belt Avenue in the 28th Ward the Wells Goodfellow neighborhood the developer here, as well as the owner, is Joe Tumlin. It is a two bedroom, one bath, single family residence that he purchased with a construction budget of about $47,000. Uh, quaint property, he's gone in and done some renovation to the interior. The alderman is supporting 10 years tax abatement on this property and given the neighborhood and well, the condition of the building, we agree that 10 years tax abatement at 100% is appropriate for this property. It is in the category F neighborhood. As I mentioned again, it's a rough part of town. Okay. Uh, uh, any questions from the committee? Uh, Alderman Moore? No Alderman, or Alderwoman uh, Howard? No questions. Alderwoman Murphy? No questions. Alderman Gunther. No questions. Okay, I, I have no questions. This, I will entertain a motion that we pass Board Bill 173 out with a due pass recommendation. So moved. Second, previous roll. Any objection to previous roll? Hearing none, Board Bill 173 passes out with a due pass recommendation. Thank you, Amina. Thank you. Um, Alderman Conway has a number of board bills here. Uh, We'll start with board bill number 147. Do you want to let more go or no? I think Zach. Okay. Just right here. I, I've reached out to Alderman Williamson to see if, if he wants to hold or have his board bill heard. I'll do it for him if he... I just, I don't want to pass it if he doesn't want to. Yeah, I know. Mm -hmm. 
he check the discrepancy then? Oh, he just, well, it'll be fine. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, he wants it heard, so if you don't mind. Oh, no problem. Good afternoon, Zach Wilson, SLDC. Board Bill 147, 4131 Floor Place. This house has been in the same family since the 1940s. Um, Patricia Cusimano uh, currently owns it. Her senior, senior citizen parents passed away. They were in the 90s. Patricia's in her 70s. Um, she's investing $230,000 into the property. Uh, staff supports five years of tax abatement at 50% of 2017's assessment. The assessment of the property shot up quite a bit from 2016 to 2017. So we agreed on the tax abatement as long as we stayed at the 2017 assessment level. Yes. Um, are there any questions? Alderman Moore? Uh, Alderman Murphy? Uh, so she currently lives in the home? Yes. Oh, okay. Thank you. She, well, she'll be moving. She'll be moving. Yes. Oh, thank you. Beautiful. Alderman Gunther? No questions. I have one question. So they're going to, she's going to have this renovated as she lives there? Uh, uh, no, she, has, she hasn't moved in yet, but she, once it's completed, she'll be moving in. Okay. It was okay. her parents' house. Okay. Um, any further questions? Hearing no more questions. I would like to pass Board Bill 147 with a due pass recommendation. So moved. Again. A previous roll. Any objection to previous roll? Hearing none. Hearing none. Okay. No pass. Pass. Board Bill 147 is passed. 148. And then 148. Board Bill 148 is 4212, 4212 Botanical. Uh, it's in the Shaw neighborhood. Developers Garcia Garcia Developments. Oh yeah. A, they're converting a two-family into a single family. They bought the property for eighty thousand, investing three hundred fifty-eight thousand into it. Be marketed for four fifty. Um, it's been vacant for numerous years and very, was in very rough shi shape. Um, the staff recommends five years at ninety percent, and Alderman Conway supports the staff's mm -hmm. recommendation. And VAC. Family to single, I like that. Okay. Um, are there any questions from the committee? Mm -mm. Alderman. Um, Nobody. More. I'm sorry. Nobody had a question. Okay. Alderman Murphy. No questions. Looks good. Alderman Genther. No questions. Okay. Hearing no further questions. Um, do I hear a do pass? Do I hear a move to pass this board bill? A motion so moved. to pass this board bill out of committee. So moved. Second. Pre previous roll. Any objections to previous roll? Hearing no objections, previous roll. Board bill 148 is passed out of committee. Okay. Oh, 149. All right. And next. 149. All right, we'll take up also? 149. It's another of Alderman Conway's. Oh, okay. 49. All this paper. Board Bill 149, 3931 Russell, 8th Ward, Shaw neighborhood, developers Orlando Askins. He bought the property for 105000 He's investing 170000 He's um, going to market the property for 315000 Um it's an MVAD. Staff recommended five years at 50%, and Alderman supports the staff's recommendation. Well, there's that Orlando Askins again. <laughs> okay, uh, questions from the committee. Alderman Moore. No questions. Alderwoman uh, Howard. No questions. Alderwoman Murphy. No questions. Looks nice. Alderman Gunther. No questions. Okay, uh, hearing no questions, I'll accept a motion that we pass out Board Bill 149 with the due pass recommendation. So moved. Second, previous roll. Any objections to previous roll? Hearing none, Board Bill 149 passes out with a due pass recommendation. 
Thank you, Zach. And we will uh, take up Board Bill 166. Board Bill 166, Tower Grove East Neighborhood, 3441 through 3451 Juniata. Developers UIC. It's currently a vacant lot. Uh, it was a warehouse that caught on fire some years ago. Huh. It's one block from Roosevelt. Uh, it's a majority is uh, rental on one side, four families, and it's a couple of small single families across the street. Um, we're looking to establish some owner-occupied housing on this block. The developer bought 120,000, bought the lot for 120,000, investing 910,000 into the property. Uh, it will be three single-family homes: 312, 325, and three. Um, almost a half a million dollars. Uh, staff recommends a seven-year tax abatement at 90%. It's an MVAE currently. Okay. Uh, questions from the committee, Alderman Moore. Alderwoman Howard. No questions. Alderwoman Murphy. No questions. Alderman Gunther. Um, thank you. Um, just looking at the pictures on this side here was there a building torn down no. to make a vacant lot or was it already it, it vacant? caught fire it was caught a fire. warehouse okay. it was a pretty severe fire damaged the buildings next door to it also gotcha okay thank you that's all are there any other questions on board bill 166 hearing none I'll entertain a motion that we pass board bill 166 out with a due pass recommendation I moved second Previous roll. Any objection to previous roll? Ooh, ouch. Uh, hearing none, Board Bill 166 passes out with a due pass recommendation. Thank you, Zach. Uh, Alderman Williamson has a uh, Board Bill for, before us that Alderwoman Howard said that she would present. Mm -hmm. Good. Uh, it's board, board Bill number 152. Okay. Okay. Union Boulevard. Excuse me. You have before you Board Bill 152, renovation and re rehabilitation of 1416, 1418 Union Boulevard. May I have one of those, please? Oh, God. <laughs> Never mind. Okay. The project consists of the renovation of a four family in the Academy neighborhood. The prospective redeveloper purchased the property for $4,000 and plans on renovating the four family to remain rental units for the approximate cost of $175,000. The projects will rent for an anticipated amount of $530 a month. The redeveloper plans to utilize private funds for this project. Alderman Williamson wishes to support this project with up to a 10 year tax payment and the staff concurs. The MBA Bay is H. As you can see, this is a very beautiful building, and I think it will yeah. enhance the neighborhood with the turrets on the front. Yeah. Um, and I would ask that the chair so, pass uh, this. I will just, uh, does anyone have any questions? Mm -mm. Um, I do have one, uh, Dale. I. I recently read an article in the paper that there's a newer development happening in the Academy neighborhood. Are you familiar with that? Mm? Uh, it's the first market rate development in the neighborhood. It's either the visitation neighborhood or the Academy neighborhood. I but, do not remember. Okay. I just wasn't sure if this was in close proximity to that oh, re redevelopment or not. Mm? Okay. Um, this is, uh, it's in the MVAH category, which is the, you know, yellow, light yellow area of the city. So obviously an area where we should be um, supporting incentives for redevelopment. Um, hearing no other questions, I'll entertain a motion that we pass Board Bill 152 out with a due pass recommendation. So moved. Second. Previous roll. Any objection to previous roll? Hearing none. Board Bill 152 passes out with a due pass recommendation. Oh, that uh, concludes the board bills that we are hearing this morning in the Neighborhood Development Committee. Um, as of now, we do not have a meeting scheduled, uh, but Dale, uh, I'm assuming we'll probably have to have one. 
So uh, that would be wonderful if we could keep it to, well, I mean, we'll continue moving forward with the business of the city as necessary. Um, but we will try and make sure that this is at 9 a.m. next time, <laughs> as to not conflict with any other uh, committee hearings that might be taking place. Um, and uh, uh, Dale, I did have one of our committee members who said that Tuesdays is a, a difficult day for them, so probably um, I'll have to work with you on scheduling it for a different day. So. Um, with that, there's uh, no other business to be heard before our committee this morning, so I uh, will accept a motion that we adjourn for the day. Second, Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. Motion to adjourn. Oh, motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. I didn't hear any nays. Let's go. <laughs> All right. Thank you. No nays allowed, right? <laughs> That's a consensus. Bye. Here you go.